Hello there guys, it's CoolFox over here and today I'm bringing you an unboxing and review of the Apeman C860 dashcam. So starting off with the unboxing, on the front here you have a picture of the dashcam itself and since this comes with a rear camera as well, it has basically two dashcams included in one package. So you have a 1440p front camera and also a 1080p rear view camera which I will show you how to install later on. Looking at the size there isn't much information but on the back here you can see that it should have a max resolution of 1520p and a max resolution of 1080p on the rear. It does have G sensor protection so if the car is stationary it should detect movement and start recording. It has motion detection so again it's very similar to the G sensor protection here and it does have parking monitoring which can be very useful and we will check this out later on. Apart from that you have a 3 inch screen as listed here on the back a 170 degree wide angle lens and you should put in a class 10 micro SD card obviously for the max resolution here to be recorded without any problems and also I would recommend a 16 gig or 32 gig card or even more so there will be more space for your recordings. So starting off with the unboxing here opening up the box you can see here that if you have any questions you can send them an email on the email listed here and you can also find their social media pages on Facebook, Twitter and also Google+. And opening up this flap inside you will find a few more paperwork and you will also find the cables for the cameras in this box on the right. So on this paper here basically all there is listed is that you get a one year warranty with any Apeman product and if you have any problems you can contact them on these emails listed. Then you also get this card here which basically states that you can get a free gift, either a 32 gig micro SD card or a 4-in-1 card reader and you do this by basically writing down the review right here and then sending an email to the email listed down at the bottom. I would not suggest that you give a 5 star review just for the gift since obviously a review should consist of your honest opinions and if you think that this does not deserve 5 stars I would encourage you to write how many stars you actually think this deserves. And then you also get the user manual here which basically states a lot of useful information in different languages and if you have any problems installing the dashcam itself you should obviously take a look at this manual. So the rest of the box includes the camera here which is on the bottom left, the rear camera which is inside of a small box, the suction mount and also the cables on the side. And overall I think presentation of the box is really good and everything is put into sections which is really good to see. So overall the unboxing experience is actually very very good. So starting off with the suction mount here, opening up the box. Inside you will find a small suction mount here which is controlled via this little lever on the back. And you can also adjust this here to give it a desired angle of your choice. Now taking a look at the rear camera. You can see that this hooks up via a tape mount which is easily put on on the back of your car and you can also see that it is protected with some plastic which is really good to see as they can get scratched inside of the box during shipping. And on the back you can see a USB type C port which is very useful since most cables nowadays are coming in USB type C form. Now looking at the cables themselves, here you can see a bunch of cables, obviously this long one is for the rear camera. This one right here connects to the main dash cam since it has the car charger as well. And this one right here is extra as well as the tape mount which can be used to change the one on the rear camera. And now looking at the main dash cam itself you can see that it is also covered with some plastic wrapping which is really good to see. There is the small Apeman logo here on the top left with a small speaker also here on the bottom left. On the right side you will find three buttons as well as an extra button here on the bottom for powering it on if it does not power on by itself. So on the top you will find a micro USB port which is used to connect the car charger to. So this will basically be the main power source for this camera and the rear camera. Then you'll find the USB-C port which is used to connect the rear camera with the main dash cam. So obviously this is required to provide power and also store on the same SD card. You also get the mounting port right here for the suction mount and on the left side all you can see is a micro SD card slot for obviously a micro SD card up to 128 gigabytes. And on the bottom you also get a microphone here if you want to record audio and a reset button here which can be activated with a sim ejector tool or the tool found inside of the box with the cables. 
So obviously if there is some kind of problem with the dash cam you can always reset it. And then the main piece itself, the lens here, is supposed to have a Sony CMOS sensor so the quality from this dash cam is supposed to be very very good which I will include some footage later on in the video itself. So first off you will need to slide that piece inside of the dash cam on the top right there and once that is done you can obviously mount it on the dashboard right here. And then as for the rear camera you should put in the USB-C cable as it's put on there where I put the extra cable in the boot of the car. And then to go through the menu you need to press the power button and for example here you can go to video resolution and change that. Then you can also go to picture in picture, photo pixel, loop recording, audio. So you have many stuff that you should check when setting up the camera which are very useful. And to call back you need to press the menu button, then you can go to system settings as well. So overall I would say that the quality from this dash cam is actually really good and the only gripe I have with it is that the Apeman watermark is non-removable which I do find very annoying. But apart from that the rear camera is actually pretty good quality, it's not as good as the front camera of course but it's still pretty good for rear collisions for example and also the overall design of the dashcam itself is very minimalistic and even the Apeman logo here on the top is almost unnoticeable and overall the layout of the menu is also really good which is controlled via this button right here and these two and obviously the power button acting as the OK and so overall I would really recommend this dashcam if you want monitoring for the back as well as both cameras deliver good quality video and especially the front one right here does deliver a very good image. So that was all for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed, if you did please leave a like and subscribe for more content. This was Cool Fox, and I'm out, peace.